Okay, so this is Colette Berg, and today I'm going to talk about my final thoughts slash evaluation on my CBL. Uh, my CBL was called Make the Invisible Visible. Our theme was poverty. So in this case, we considered the invisible to be the impoverished. We wanted to make them, make them visible by giving them, giving them a political voice, which is a lofty goal, admittedly. And on our way to this goal, there were certainly a lot of bumps. Just to highlight a few of our biggest problems, well, I'll start at the beginning, which is where every CBL starts in the stage of asking questions. Now, in the stage of asking questions, we got really caught up on the idea of political efficacy, and we were kind of confused about what the project was supposed to be about. We knew what the term political efficacy meant from one of our analyses, uh, so we just wrote down a ton of questions. We were saying, so if someone's educated, does that mean that they're way more likely to think that their vote counts, and how can we change that? But the problem was, we wrote so much about political efficacy, we really, we dug deep about that issue, but we didn't dig broadly. We didn't really explore any other parts of the project, which were making a difference, using our AP Gov knowledge, and doing something specific, like making something that we can actually measure, make a real and lasting difference. So, we eventually, another thing about political efficacy that was an issue is that it's really hard for us, we're not sociologists, to measure someone's political efficacy, whereas it would be easier to say, to measure, I don't know, how many people sent in a letter, which is related to political efficacy, but it would have been difficult. So that was probably our first major roadblock. It really stressed a lot of us out after um, we got, like, negative feedback about it. So then, after that, we realized we needed to go much wider um, at first. This was before we had even settled on the poverty issue. But we're all from Detroit, and so we're all interested in issues such as education and poverty, especially in urban areas. So we started thinking of a bunch of people to talk to. Luckily, four of, this, of our... Um, uh, four of our eight parents happened to work for nonprofit organizations in some capacity. Uh, so we got a lot of inspiration from them, then the, the interviews that we conducted. We did a lot of research in the International Encyclopedia of Social Science, which we got through Gale. That was very, very helpful. Um, and so we settled on poverty as our issue. There were some other things we were thinking about, like um, voting was a big thing we were thinking about, um, education, like we all love tutoring, and that's always fascinating, especially inner city education, but we ended up focusing on poverty, especially since poverty is a universal issue. Obviously, there are wealthier areas um, in the world as well as in southeastern Michigan, but we figured, I mean, even in Farmington Hills, there are, like, less affluent areas, and so we wanted to kind of, uh, we, we eventually decided that we wanted to make the invisible visible. Well, actually, we had a, we had another detour before that. I kind of skipped that detour. Our next biggest um, issue was we, we wanted to plan a service trip. We, we actually planned a very service-oriented project. So we were going to make this gigantic calendar. We actually, I, I think we like had a rough draft of, the Google, of a Google calendar where we would invite all the Mercy Girls. We would make... Um, we would make, uh, like, we would put every kind of service opportunity that we could possibly think of on there, and then Mercy Girls could get a hold of it. It would make service more accessible. And Mr. Baker was like, well, that's great for a service project. Um, well, you, you, you were like that. And, and which, at the time, we were really disappointed because we were really excited about that. But then we were like, well, it's true that we're not really using any of our AP Gov knowledge. That's fair enough. So, because we weren't using any of our AP Gov knowledge, we eventually decided on doing something political to help the poor. And this is at just perfect timing, because all over the world, there is debate over what the government's responsibility to the poor actually is. I mean, if you just look at all the austerity measures being passed in Europe right now, they're completely commonplace to solve the financial crisis. And there are things that people have been used to for many years, that now don't seem guaranteed at all. Things like health care in Europe or Social Security in the United States. It's, everything is in need of reform. And so while we're definitely not any of those gung-ho people that say, that's it, we just need to spend it all, like, <laughs> go in debt now and worry about it later, that's definitely not what we're about or anything. We just don't want the people who are actually going to be most profoundly affected by these austerity budgets to get lost in the shuffle. 
We want their voice to be part of it. It shouldn't just be about the bottom line. The bottom line is very, very important, but it shouldn't just be the bottom line in that they forget about everyone else in the process. Another thing that was an integral part of our um, project was that, like, we feel like sometimes there's this widespread sentiment around mercy um, of sort of an ignorance about poverty. So we wanted to help end that by educating Mercy Girls. Um, we made a video about minimum wage. A lot of people don't really realize how much the federal government has an effect on the quality of life in the United States just through the minimum wage. Because if, I mean, that's what we pay workers, that seven twenty-five an hour federal minimum wage is really, really important. Another thing is there's a lot of things that Mercy Girls take for granted. They don't realize like how much it would be if they worked for minimum wage. So that's what we tried to contextualize in our video. So overall, my my reactions to the project. Let's see. Okay, I personally did learn a lot about the poor. Um, I think just for the research that we did from websites like Bread for the World, FreeRice.com, other things like that that we posted on our Facebook page, a lot of stuff was things that I had no idea about it. So I, I learned a lot about poverty in America, and that was really great for me. I'm one more educated, soon-to-be voter. I'm going to be 18 in June. So I was happy about that. I also think we did educate a lot of other people. I mean, just from the comments and the likes on Facebook, it seems like people were getting excited about that. I'm really excited. I also learned, I increased my political efficacy through this because I learned how easy it is to tell the governor your opinion. Um, we just learned that you just put your opinion into a box, you put your name and address, and it will send it to the governor of Michigan. And I think that's really cool. I never knew that. Uh, another thing, we learned a lot about writing professional letter. We wrote like six different drafts of our letter because we didn't want to sound unprofessional. We really wanted to have the statistics to back it up, and uh, I think in the end we did. Another thing that I learned, though, is that sometimes you have to compromise between being really decisive and not alienating a bunch of people because at the beginning, uh, when we decided to write our letter, we wanted to do a right-to-work letter. Um, we, an an anti-right-to-work letter because the four of us are against right-to-work, but what we realize is that's definitely not a universal opinion. There's a lot of people who think right-to-work would just grow jobs in our state and would be really good for the state in the long run. Um, and just because we don't agree with that doesn't mean we should do an entire CBL about it because our entire point was reaching as many people as possible. And if we did a right-to-work letter, it'd be possible that some people wouldn't even like our page, let alone send in our letter. So in the end, our letter basically says, don't forget the poor, um, which is fine. That's not a bad thing. In fact, I think it's a great sentiment, but it was a little, of, a little bit of a letdown in that we couldn't send the letter. Um, so my favorite thing, I really did like learning. Um, I also, I mean, I learned, I learned kind of the issues that people that people have when they are trying to make a difference because you never want to alienate people. That's part of making a difference is reaching out to as many people as possible. Um, let's see, another issue that I had, hmm. Overall, I liked the project. Like, I thought it was really fascinating um, to do. I liked that we got to plan it out, so I think that was really cool. And I think we accomplished it in a very Mercy High School, well, uh, just high schooler in general way because we did it using a Facebook page and a YouTube video. I think we really did use technology. I mean, now I know how to use Prezi because we used Prezi for our presentation, and it's an awesome website. I really, really like that. So that's another thing that I learned. Uh, I think one of my least favorite parts of the project... Hmm, it was really frustrating when we lost most of our footage for the video. That was frustrating. I'm a person, I think I like a little bit more guidance sometimes. I mean, it's always good to plan out a project yourself, but sometimes I like a little more guidance because I feel like I can really, I don't know, sometimes I feel like I, I feel a lot better if I know what I'm doing. And it was almost a little scary to have this freedom of saying, you can do whatever you want, but at the same time still being held to a very high standard. The biggest weakness of the project was definitely our lack of measurement. We really, really should have put a survey on the Facebook page, um, just asking people whether or not they had watched our video, what they thought about it, how they feel educated. Um, so that's something we definitely sh uh, should have done. And I think we still will, honestly. We talked about it and we said, let's put a survey on the Facebook page just so we could know for our personal satisfaction if we made a difference. We've not put it on the Facebook page as of yet, and I don't know how many people would respond. Another thing is that we want to keep our YouTube videos circulating because 
that was probably my favorite thing about the project was how cool our YouTube video worked out with the contextualizing of minimum wage because that was really really helpful just for me and I think a lot of people have difficulty processing numbers numbers don't really mean a lot but um, I honestly I think I'm gonna keep on sending around that YouTube video just on my own Facebook status and maybe we're, we're probably it'll probably be worth a mass email to the Mercy student body just just to show people I'm I'm really proud of that um, I wish we had had a way to measure it that was that was our major weakness. We should have we definitely should have done that. Um, but I think we did educate people at least somewhat, just as showcased in our over eighty likes on Facebook, because that means that they while maybe they didn't thoroughly comb through every chart and every fact and number that we posted on the Facebook page, they were still receiving updates. And I think just liking our project showed that they cared a little bit uh, about what happened. So overall, those are my thoughts on my CBL. Um, in general, my problems with the CBL itself, they just have to do with my personal preferences. Like, I'm someone who personally per likes to work alone because sometimes I tend to just go crazy and do everything on these projects. I mean, I don't know, not do everything, but just kind of sit down and get really into it and then um, just kind of wanting to do everything myself. I'm kind of a nitpicker. Um, so I'm someone who kind of prefers to work alone in that aspect. Like, I don't necessarily like depending on other people for a project, but I mean, that's just my personal thing. Um, and then I probably would have liked a little bit more guidance, but in the end, I really liked, I liked how it worked out, you know? I mean, I wish that we had been more aggressive with our letter, not in the virtual world, but in the real world, and having people send it in. And, um, I wish that we had had a more effective video in that it had the Mercy footage. I still think it was effective, but I it, think it would have been much better with the Mercy footage. Uh, and I wish we had been able to measure it. But other than that, I'm pretty happy with the way it worked out. I really like our topic. It's close to my heart. Um, just recently, the four of us went on Habitat for Humanity um, over spring break. So I feel like that just shows... Um, through our CBL, we did know more about poverty issues in America, and then just going and volunteering, we all we were kind of backed up by some of the um, insight that we had gained from our project. And then we took the insight that we gained on Habitat and used it in our project as well. Um, so overall, I think I think it worked out well, even if we didn't necessarily make a measurable difference. But thank you, Mr. Baker. That's all for now.